Welcome back to Odyssey, everyone, and my new home golf simulator. In today's video, I'm gonna go through in detail every step that I took to build my home simulator and go through how you can build one in your house and do it cheaply and safely. I'll also go through in detail every mistake that I made building my simulator so that you guys can avoid making similar mistakes. If you guys are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe for more golf related content and yearly challenges where I push myself to try and do new things. If you guys like things in written form, I've also created a full guide that walks through steps, pricing, and other reference material and put it on my website, odyssey.net. I have the link in the description down below. All you need to do is go to that webpage and go to the blog section and there will be one on how to build a golf simulator. Without further ado, let's get into it. The first step in any major design or build project is to clearly define our goals, our budget, and if we have any limitations or constraints. When I set out on this project, I had three major goals in mind. To be as price conscious as possible, to be able to have the simulator fit in my limited space constraints, and also to be able to convert the space into a full-time gym as well as a golf simulator. There are three major components that we need to plan our budget for. The launch monitor, the enclosure, and the software and the computing components. I will cover the pricing of every component in this video, but for a fully comprehensive list of all the parts and their pricing, as well as links to the websites and where to buy them, you can get them on my website, odyssey.net, as I previously mentioned. The launch monitors range from a couple hundred dollar budget options like the Garmin R10, all the way up to the TrackMan, which is over tens of thousands of dollars. For this project, I wanted to go with a middle range launch monitor, so that left us with the options of the Mevo Plus, the SkyTrack Plus, and the Bushnell Launch Pro. I ended up going with the SkyTrack Plus, which I'll explain more as to why in the launch monitor section of this video. For the enclosure, there are many sites that offer fully fabricated or pre-built solutions for the enclosure or the cage. And these can be great options if you just want a totally built turnkey solution, but they can be a little pricey. I enjoy building things myself and I needed some flexibility in the design and function of my enclosure, so I decided to build it myself and save some money. For the software and computing, the pricing primarily comes down to two options. You can either go a subscription-based model where you pay either monthly or annually, or you can try to purchase the software outright and it will have a little bit higher of an upfront cost, but you could save money in the long run compared to the subscription-based model. A home golf simulator can take up a lot of space, and with my two initial goals of wanting to build mine with the limited space constraints that I had, but also be able to convert the space into a fully functioning gym, I wanted to really spend a lot of time on the planning and design phase of this project to make sure I got everything right the first time. You know what they say, measure twice, cut once. First, I measured all the dimensions of the room to get a floor plan. I started by drawing out what I wanted the space to kind of look like, and then see what dimensions would actually fit for each given space in the room. My ideal space featured a simulator area, a putting area, and the full working gym area. Looking at my floor plan, the space in front of me and behind me was a little bit limited. Typically, you want 10 to 12 feet either way, to make sure that no balls are gonna be ricocheting back at you and you can get the most accurate readings on your data as possible. Ultimately, based on my limited space constraints, my design was going to look like this. The last thing to measure was the height of the room. With the amount of space that I had for the enclosure, I decided it would be better to have it hanging from the ceiling than to have some sort of pre-built piping solution. This way, I could save a couple extra inches from the pipes and the enclosure since space was limited and I'd also be able to move them on the track out of the way so that I could have my full gym area. 
it's typically recommended that you have at least 10 feet of clearance to be able to swing your clubs inside. But I took some driver swings and my nine foot ceiling was going to work out okay. Based on my room specifications, the biggest impact screen I could have was a nine by nine foot screen. These measurements will be very important when we're calculating the throw distance of our projector, which we will cover in the projector section of this video. Probably the most important part of the simulator build, the main factors you want to consider when deciding which launch monitor to purchase are price, if you have any space or limitation constraints, do you need it to be portable, how accurate do you need the data to be, and do you want to use it outside or not. I wanted to go with a middle range launch monitor as far as price was concerned, so my options were the Mevo Plus, the Skytrack Plus, and the Bushnell Launch Pro. Here are the main reasons I decided to go with the Skytrack Plus. One of my biggest swing flaws is definitely an in to out swing path. So I wanted to make sure that the launch monitor I got would able to measure the swing path value. So all three of these models were able to do this, so they're all still in the running. When it comes to pricing, the Mevo Plus is definitely the most cost effective option. I really like that you could buy their software outright and not have to pay some sort of monthly or yearly subscription. The Bushnell Launch Pro had the biggest subscription cost, so for me that one was just kind of eliminated right away. The Mevo Plus has pretty strict requirements where you need 10 feet in front of you and 10 feet behind you to get an accurate reading, since it sits behind you like the TrackMan does. I needed something that was going to be sitting right in front of me because I kind of had the limited space constraints. I didn't quite have 10 feet in front and behind me. I only plan to use the launch monitor as an indoor golf simulator, so taking all those points into account, the Skytrack Plus was the one that's going to work best for me. I ordered the Skytrack Plus from the Skytrack website directly, and the process was pretty seamless and it arrived in a couple days. I got my Skytrack around Black Friday, and I managed to get it with a promo code as well, so I was able to get it for $2,560. I also ordered the protective case for the Skytrack Plus for $71, and it has some nice legs on it to make it easy to level the device. This is the area of the project with the most potential cost savings and the most flexibility in design. Now, as I previously mentioned, there's many sites that offer turnkey solutions for enclosures or golf simulators, but today I'm going to focus on how you can build your own. The main design choices you have to make when designing your enclosure are the flooring, the actual enclosure itself, whether you want netting, curtains, or like a physical cage, the impact screen, and then if you want a projector or not. For the flooring, I really wanted it to be covered in fake grass. So what I decided to do was a combination of artificial turf with foam gym tiles and then double-sided carpet tape to secure it. I ordered the foam gym tiles off of Amazon, and based on my original floor plan, I figured I would need about 50 2 by 2 foot foam tiles. For some of the edges, I had to cut them individually to fit to shape. I was able to order all these in several packages for about $210. For the grass turf, I looked at several options online, but they were all quite expensive and only came in small chunks. So I decided to head to my favorite hardware store, Menards. In the carpet section, they managed to have a carpet that was artificial grass turf and it was the right thickness and design I was looking for. It only cost 44 cents per square foot and the max carpet width they have is 12 feet. So I got a 12 foot by 13 foot piece in one single roll for about $69. The last thing I needed for the flooring was some double sided carpet tape which I ordered off Amazon for $13.99. I cut the foam gym tiles to length and I taped and rolled out the carpet. And originally I had planned to cut a square to put the driving range or hitting area into so that it was entirely level. But when I finished the flooring, it kind of just looked too good as is and I didn't want to ruin cutting a hole into the big piece. So I decided to just put the hitting mat on top of it and I still think it looks pretty good. This was the first mistake I made when building my simulator. Since I planned to cut a hole in the carpet to put the hitting area, I didn't put as much tape in that kind of center area of the carpet, so it's not as secure as all of the outer areas. So if you guys are planning to cut a hole, make sure you plan for this ahead of time, and also double check that your hitting area thickness 
matches the combined thickness of your foam tiles and the carpet that you're going to use, so you have a nice level surface. For the impact screen, I needed a custom size made, and all the online options seem to be about the same price, so I went with the Carl's Place standard impact screen. I needed a 9 foot by 9 foot impact screen to kind of maximize the space, but the nice thing about it being square is that with all the grommet holes, if one area ever gets worn out, I can kind of just easily rotate the screen and then get the most use out of it. The price for the standard impact screen at this size was $214.95. For mounting the impact screen to the ceiling, this was probably my favorite part of the build and I'm really proud of the solution that I came up with to hang this thing to the ceiling. First, I started by finding where the studs were located so that I could drill and screw some eye bolts into the ceiling. These were only about $1.50 or $1.70 from Menards, and I ended up getting five to six of them. Now, the eye bolts didn't line up exactly with all the grommet holes on the impact screen, so what I decided to do was run a steel cable through all the eye bolts then all I needed to do was take these carabiners and I could easily just clip all of the grommet holes onto the cable. Not only did this evenly distribute the weight across all the eye bolts, but if I ever need to rotate the screen to increase the longevity of it from hitting into a specific area, it's super easy to just unclip the carabiners and move it to the next side and just clip it back onto the cable. So I really like the way this design came out and it makes it super easy to swap out screens or rotate them if you ever need to get a new one. The carabiners can easily be purchased from Harbor Freight or Menards for around $10 and the steel cable I got from Menards for $13. One quick disclaimer about the cable solution is that using a cable crimper at a really awkward angle on a ladder is nothing short of a Super Saiyan effort, so just keep that in mind when you're deciding to go with this solution. Maybe get an automatic cable crimper, there's a better way to do it. Here's a quick video of me trying to do it and just screaming for my life trying to pincer that thing. closure build is the netting. So originally I had thought to go with blackout curtains, but they were actually quite expensive at this size, so I decided to go with some mesh netting instead, and I still think it worked out pretty good and was a much cheaper option. As I mentioned in the beginning of this video, one of my goals was to also have the space be convertible into a full gym, so I decided to mount the netting on curtain tracks so that I could retract them and use the space as the regular gym. Because I'm a couple feet closer to the impact screen due to my space constraints, I'm hitting lower down on the impact screen. So I didn't think it was necessary to put netting on the ceiling, I just built the U cage around the impact screen to catch all the stray balls going out. I ordered three sets of curtain tracks from Amazon for a total of $67, and the netting pieces I got from Harbor Freight for $23 a piece. For the dimensions of the netting, I got two pieces that were 8 feet by 10 feet, and then one piece that was 10 feet by 10 feet. So the back piece has a little bit of slack on both sides, since the impact screen is 9 feet, and the side pieces only needed to go out about 8 feet to run past me, and I have 10 feet so there's some extra slack on the bottom. Before I hung the netting up on the curtain tracks, I sewed it together in a U shape, using some sailor's thread I got off Amazon for 10 bucks. One tip for the curtain tracks is they were shipped to me rolled up in a spiral, so after you unroll them, make sure you mount it with the coiled part facing outward. This will give a nice opening effect to the curtains, and it kind of fans out at the end. The last thing I did was attach some of the extra foam gym tiles I had to the bottom of the wall, just in case I hit a piercing stinger or a drive, even through the impact screen, the extra spacing, and the netting, this was just as an extra precaution to protect the walls. For those that want an immersive golf experience, the projector is definitely the way to go. This was definitely the part of the build where I made the biggest mistakes, so here are a couple tips to avoid making the same mistakes that I did. I would highly recommend using a projector-centric website 
to calculate the throw distances and get the other specifications on the projectors. The second major mistake I made in this simulator build was not calculating the throw distances right the first time. I ended up getting my old projector mounted and wired up and everything, only to have to tear it down, patch up those holes, and order another one. This leads me to the third major mistake I made in the simulator build, and that was the first time I was hanging the projector. Uh, the holes that I tapped, I did not take enough time to find the studs in the ceiling. So when I tapped the hole to put the plastic cap into for the screws, one of them hit the stud and I wasn't able to get the plastic cap in all the way. Most projectors will support an aspect ratio of 16 by 9 or 4 by 3. Now, as we mentioned earlier in the video, my screen is 9 feet by 9 feet, which is a square. So the ideal aspect ratio I'd want is 1 to 1. But I didn't really factor this in the, with my first original projector either, because when I had it mounted up, the closest I could get to the aspect ratio was a 4 by 3, and it was a real small square in the middle of the screen. With the second projector I ordered, I spent a lot of time on the Projector Central website looking at what the projector would look like when I used the 4 to 3 aspect ratio on a square screen to make sure that I was maximizing the amount of space and that the image would look good. Depending on your room size, you'll probably want a projector that's labeled as short throw so that when you're standing underneath it, your head is not casting a shadow onto the screen. I decided to go with the BenQ TH671. It's a 1080p projector and I managed to get it off Amazon for about $800. I got it during Black Friday, but you can always shop around for deals or check the Projector Central website to see what they have it listed for. The mounting hardware and the HDMI cable I also got off of Amazon for $21.99 and $17 respectively. And the last thing I'll mention about projectors is to make sure that you get one with a remote. To run the simulator software, you'll most likely need a gaming level PC. There are some options though that let you use your phone, iPads, or tablets as well. I was lucky enough that I happened to have an extra gaming PC lying around, so that was one expensive component of the build that I did not have to buy. Software options and pricing plans was one of the key deciding factors in which launch monitor that I chose. As I mentioned earlier, I don't like subscription-based plans, so that kind of immediately disqualified the Bushnell Launch Pro because their software is all subscription-based and it's really expensive. The Mevo Plus has the best software options in my opinion because you can buy everything outright, but if your space is limited like mine, then the SkyTrack is probably your best bet. Now, if you want to use your SkyTrack to its fullest extent, you have to get one of the two subscription plans. They have the Game Improvement Plan for $129.95 per year, or the Play and Improve Plan for $249.95 per year. Now this next piece of information is absolutely critical. If you're only going to take one thing away from this video as a SkyTrack user, it would definitely be this. If you guys are planning on using your SkyTrack as mainly an indoor golf simulator or playing rounds of golf, then you only need the Game Improvement Plan for $129 per year. I went with TGC 2019 and bought the software outright, so if you plan to do the same, go with the Game Improvement Plan and save yourself a couple hundred bucks per year. The Play and Improve Plan does come with some simulator features, but it only has 15 courses, and if you want access to the other 15 courses it comes with, you're required to use an iOS device. So it's kind of limiting compared to the amount of courses you get with TGC 2019. That covers everything from the simulator build side. Let's quickly recap the cost breakdown of everything and then get into some testing. The total cost of the enclosure ended up being $730.73. But because we sourced all the parts ourselves, and a lot of them were from Menards, Menards offers an 11% rebate on everything. So we were able to get $53 back, bringing our total cost down to $677.73 for the enclosure. The launch monitor we got at a promotional rate, so including the case, it was $2,631. The projector and CPU setup, including accessories, was $838. And the software package with the one-time purchase of TGC 2019 
and the game improvement package was $1,024. These prices may vary a little bit depending on your specific setup, but if we look at the total all-in cost for our custom built enclosure, our hitting area, and our launch monitor, it brings this project to $4,148 for a simple, cheap, and safe home golf simulator that meets all of our goals for this project. Just a quick reminder that everything in today's video, including a parts list and pricing breakdown, can be found on my website, odyssey.net. Just go to the blog section to get started on building your own home simulator. I'm really happy with the way that this project turned out. The simulator looks really nice in the room and we can still move the curtain and have our full functioning gym. Before I sign off, let's go ahead and hit some balls so you guys can see the simulator in action. I see a lot of people doing testing, playing the course. I'm gonna go ahead and change it up a little bit and I'm going to do the wedge matrix. Lob wedge pitch shot is up first. So we got our 60 degree. Let's see how good our touch is. Oh, a little right again. Good yard yourself. So. Alright, let's go ahead and fast forward to some fuller swings. Alright, just finished up the wedge matrix. Gonna go ahead and rip a couple sevens so you guys can see a full swing. Oh, a little bit of a draw. Little bit of a draw. Why, yep, inside path. Okay. Go ahead and see if we can clean that one up here for you guys. Oh, still draw. Still too much inside? Yep, still inside. Gotta stop dropping it down and start loading that turn. That's straighter, still, still a bit of draw. All right, well, that's okay for now. Still a little bit inside path, but pretty much shows you working good here. That pretty much wraps everything up. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments section down below. I'm happy to answer any of your questions. If you guys enjoyed this video and found these tips useful, be sure to subscribe to the channel. We poured our heart and soul into this one and building the simulator, so it would be much appreciated if you guys could subscribe. And we got a lot of new exciting videos coming in the future, so be on the lookout for that. You guys can check out the website for any written content. We also got some cool t-shirts I made, so be sure to check that out. As always, thank you guys for watching, and I look forward to seeing you on the course.